Hi there stampers, this is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations. <laughs> this is the card we're making. This is done with the Whale of a Time Suite. It is found in the annual catalog on page 95 and 96. And of course my name is Lisa, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and so what I have here is the new Stampin' Up! annual catalog. And in here you will see the Whale of a Time Suite on page 94 and 95. This is a wonderful suite and with this one item number, this I want it all kind of button, you can get the stamp set, the punch, the 6x6 six six designer series paper, the seabed embossing folder, and the sheer pool party ribbon. And so this is the I want it all button. And then of course we do have them separately, so if you want to adjust the stamp set or the stamp set with the punch or in the back you'll find the designer series paper, um, that's also an option as well. The one good thing about buying things as a suite is you do have almost everything you need to get going with your card. For today's card, I used a piece as our base, and so this is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then for the inside piece, I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and this is eight inches by five and a quarter, but then scored at four. So that's basically our inside layer, is the four by five and a quarter, but I doubled it and then scored it in half. So this is gonna be the fold on the inside. You follow me? And then I took the six by six designer series paper, which is from the Whale of a Time designer series paper. These are what we call swatch books, and I cut, I took one piece of each of the papers out of the designer series paper, and I cut a three by six piece, and I leave these on my desk as a great way to remind myself of what colors are involved in here, because I'll put a sticker on the back that will tell me the name of the designer series paper, the item number, the price, and all of the colors that are involved in here. And I get that from our catalog, the catalog is great about telling us how to color coordinate. I've always said that's the thing that brought me to Stampin' Up! is they took the hard part out of it. They told us how to combine products and colors. And so you'll notice here on page 95, we have all the colors that they used in this designer series paper. So the quickest and easiest way for me to make my card was to pick what I wanted for my base, select a designer series paper, and then go out and pull out the inks that were involved in the papers, and there you go. All I needed then was a fold, and of course we know I love fancy folds, and so this one has a bit of that. And so I took the six by six, I cut it down, and I have the four and five and a quarter for the front of my card, and then I had a little extra. I had this two inch strip, and this is where I stuck it. And so it's gonna fit on the inside of my card as part of when we open. So that was just using the same designer series paper on the outside, and it allowed me to use almost the whole piece. I have a um, little piece that's excess from off the edge, but that's it. That's all I had left over. And if I wanted to, I mean, I could have this go across the corner, you know, and trim off the excess from the back. Um, I could use this on another card and maybe have a strip across the bottom. I mean, there's no reason that we can't use all these little strips. I know we've been hoarding craft supplies forever, but now that we're all locked inside with quarantine, we have all the time to do these things, hopefully. When I put it on here, it was a little bit extra. When I folded it back, you could see a teensy bit of the designer series paper coming from the back. So I took my paper snips and I just went along and gently cut off that teeny tiny strip. You can see it was hardly anything but I didn't want it on there, so I cut it off. It was better to have something to cut off than needing to glue something on, because cutting off is so much easier. Now I'm gonna go and take my designer series paper, and I'm gonna glue it to my card base. And then you notice there was a hole in the front, so that's where I'm gonna take my punch. I've got my two and a quarter inch punch. I'm gonna feed this down from the top, make sure I'm centered and then punch. 
So there's my peekaboo hole. And then we're going to do some stamping on this. So for the corner, I stamped in Just Jade and Calypso Coral. So I'm going to use the, the larger of the seaweed. So I'm stamping once, lifting, adjusting a little, and stamping again. Now what this is called is a second generation stamping. And it just, just gives me a shade different. So it kind of looks almost like a different color, but it's not really. It complements really well and helps give me some depth. Then I'm going to do a little bit of coral in the corner. Anybody else besides me do this? My blocks are all over there on another table, and I got impatient, and I just stuck all the stamps I was using to one block. How silly is that, right? But we will move on. So there we go. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a little bit of extra dark on the tips down here because it didn't go on here. Anyway, putting the coral there covers it up so you don't even notice there was a little bit of a, kind of a goof, not really, but kind of a goof. And then I've got my thanks a ton, and I'm gonna stamp that in the Pacific Point, which is the same color as our card base. So just a gentle tap, 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 and you're gonna to wanna to watch and make sure like I've got a little bit on the rubber there. I really don't want that. So there's our sentiment. And then if you'll notice over here, I have the turtle stamped in Just Jade. So the bubbles are in this blue. Bring in my turtle. And again, I got a little bit of a scooch there. Oh, probably can't see. There's just the teeniest bit of ink in the wrong spot and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cover that up. It was never there, right? <laughs> I also have a sand eraser that's from an art supply store that would work well too to just buff those things off really gently. If you're just popping on, this is the card we're making today. It's done with the Whale of a Time Suite from our new annual catalog, page 95 and 96. Yeah, 94, 95, and 96. Hopefully you have one of those awesome new catalogs. If you don't and you're in need of one, just let me know. I will be going to the post office later on today to mail some more of them. I am very appreciative of those who purchase from me. That does help me a lot to continue doing what I love doing, which is making these videos and cards to show you guys how I do what I do. I was saying how I was being lazy. I didn't go over and get the rest of my blocks off the table. So I'm kind of winging it with one block. Silly when I own as many as I do, but you know, whatever. <laughs> it's a Monday, right? Okay, so now all my stamping is done for there. And now what I want to do is I want to make the center part that's going to poke through there. And so that's when I'm going to bring in my two inch and my two and a quarter inch punch. They're just circles. You could also use the layering circle dies if you'd rather use those. I find punches quick and easy. And since I was a little bit scattered today, I went with quick and easy. But use what you have in your collection. Okay, so this is our new stamp and seal. The stamp and seal is our replacement for the snail. And I have to say the stamp and seal is stronger than the snail. But even if this is not quite strong enough, we now have what we call stamp and seal plus. Stamp and steel plus is the equivalent of fast fuse. We had fast fuse for a while. It sold very quickly. For some reason, Stampin' Up decided not to work with the company anymore that was manufacturing these and they went away. People were furious gobbled it all up off the clearance racks bef before we had a chance to even stock up on it. So they came out with Stamp and Seal Plus, which is the equivalent of this. So if you're assembling boxes or something, you know, an interactive card, maybe that's going to get a little more movement in it, you might want to consider the Plus. It's a little more expensive, but you get a little more seal. Also, these containers are refillable. You pull them apart, both pieces come off, the center gets thrown away, you keep the outside clamshell, put the new piece in, 
and it's got more footage on it than the snail did because it's a bigger container we're able to fit more adhesive in there which is always a good thing but it works the same as the snail but you just you know do that and then we're going to fold it over and stick it inside of our card so there's our inside but see we've got this hole now I want to fill this in with our outside sentiment and so I'm going to take my two and a quarter inch punch and I'm going to punch out of Blackberry Bliss. Blackberry Bliss is one of the colors that they used in the stack of designer series paper. That's how I chose that one. And then I'm going to use a piece of Whisper White to go in the middle. I'm reaching over here into my scraps and finding pieces. These are Pendaflex folders. 99849 and these are I keep all my papers in hanging files in a file drawer and then each color has its own hanging file and then within that I keep my scraps because I find I'm much more likely to use scraps with the color if I know where they're at and when they were all in a bin all mixed together it seemed to take too much effort so this works better for me to have them all with the full sheets and then I'll check the scrap bin before I cut into a new sheet and I waste a lot less paper that way okay so I have the two circles what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put my sentiment in the middle of the whisper white two inch circle and there you go and then I want this I also want this to go across the front so I'm gonna cut this to four inches And then to get this to line up with the outside, I'm going to just keep the card closed and I'm going to add some liquid adhesive in here. I like the liquid adhesive when I want to line something up exactly, exactly, because it stays wet for a little while. Not long, but enough to give you just a little bit of what I call wiggle room. I'm going to take the larger circle. And because I put it on the inside, it's less likely to ooze out to the outside because I don't want this circle to stick to the inside of the card. We still want it to open and shut. And then this would, of course, go in the middle. Now, if you notice, the front of this has kind of an expertly colored whale. I didn't actually stamp this whale. I cut it out of the designer series paper. And I did that by just pulling in a piece and then lining up the punch. because the punch, right in, I'd have to cut off some here, let's see. I don't know if you can see, this doesn't have the whole thing, but the punch will actually line up and cut out the whale perfectly, as if it was die cut. And when I did it, I actually, I did this one first and it kind of punched out of the little ones, I didn't like that, so I cut this one out of the way, so if I want to, I can fussy cut it and then I came in and punched a whale out of here. Now I could have cut the entire whale out, but I wanna make sure I can use all of my whales. And then you take a post-it note of some kind and you stick that on there, just so you can use this as a handle. So when you line it up into the punch, you have that handle to move it around Find out where you want to punch, and then punch it, and there you go. So I was able to cut out the one whale without disturbing other whales on the designer series paper so that I, if I wanted to fussy cut the little ones, I can. So that's just a tip. And now I have this whale, and I want to be able to stick him where he's kind of overlapping a little there and the designer series paper is a little more flimsy let's see flimsy it's thinner than our cardstock our cardstock is a nice thick um, 80 pound cardstock and I want that stability so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in another piece of cardstock now it can be anything and I'm just going to cut this out of here because really the tail is not going to touch 
And so even though I'm not getting the entire whale, because the tail of it's going to be on the front of my card, I'm not worried about adding stability to that. I just want to add stability to the part that is over the front. And oh look, we got some fun water spout if we wanted to use those. So now I'm just going to take my liquid glue again, and I'm going to adhere the designer series paper to the cardstock. And like I said, all it's doing is it's giving me a little more stability, and so it's more stable and won't be as likely to wear, I guess. And again, I'm kind of trying to avoid the part that I want poking up into the hole. So I'm just watching. There's no adhesive back here. And there we go. I know because this all has so much depth and this piece is just pretty solid, I think I might take a little bit of a sponge and sponge some ink on the side of it and just give it some more depth. That would be pretty. And then the last thing we have to do here is add the twine. And you're all wondering where I got the purple twine. Well, I didn't actually buy purple twine. I bought our standard twine and I colored it with the Stampin' Blends. And so all I did is I took, I wanted, I think I used about six inches, but I wanted it to be multiple loops on each thing. So I kind of put it back and forth and I have these multiple layers of the six inches of twine. Okay, so this is what I want to make my bow out of. Now my husband is a handy dandy carpenter and he came in and made me these little bow makers. And so all I have to do is I'm gonna wrap the, the twine around the bows, all three or four layers of it. And then I'm gonna take them in the front and I'm gonna cross them left over right. It's kind of a breast cancer ribbon, I'm told. And then you would feed the bottom part through the bottom so it's pulled to the back and then come over the top and then just tie a knot. This is much easier to do when you're not on camera, of course. And the three, four layers make it a little more difficult in addition, but this is a really handy, easy to use tool. And I have gotten him to agree to make some, so if you're interested in purchasing one, they are available for sale on my blog. So now I have this great twine bow. Now, maybe I want to use it in this color, or maybe I don't. And see, I thought it just, did, I don't know, it needed something. And so what I did then is I came in with the Blackberry Bliss Stampin' Blends marker, and then I just drew on it. And so the alcohol ink transfers to the thread. And because it's alcohol, it dries really quickly. I mean, it'll stain your fingers a little because you have to kind of move it around to color it. But, you know, we've all been coloring ribbon for a while. You, I've told you several times how we can take our Whisper White ribbons or, and run a marker over the top of it and make colored ribbon, but we can also make colored twine. I'll finish this off camera, but you get the idea. You just kind of swoosh the color all over and the bow becomes the color of your Stampin' Blends marker. And then you're ready to use a glue dot and glue it to the front of your card. So there you go. There's today's card. Anybody have any questions? Did you enjoy today's card? Hopefully this inspires you to get out your stamps, ink, and paper and give it a play. If you need anything that I used in today's project, you can, of course, pop on over to my store. Uh, queenbeecreations.net would be my blog, and you can find all the links to everything from there. I do have a hostess code, and if you use the June hostess code in June, you would get my customer appreciation PDF. I make a PDF every month of six different cards using the same stamp set. This month it is the Celebrate Sunflowers, and I would send you that PDF for free as long as you place at least a $30 order. Of course, if you want to spend a little more, you can get hostess rewards of your own. You don't have to host a party. If you place a, an order of $150 or more, you qualify for host rewards just as if you had held a party. If you want to hold a virtual party, you just let me know. I give you a hostess code. You share it with your friends and they can place an order using your hostess code number and 
you get credit that way as well. The benefit of doing that in June is we not only have the new catalog with a whole bunch of exciting new products, but we also have what we're calling the catalog kickoff celebration. And during June, by placing an order or having a party of at least $250, you not only get the $25 you would normally get, but you get an additional $25. So you get $50 in free product, just as an extra thank you for what's going on with Stampin' Up. If you wanted to, there's the Hostess Rewards that are available, but we also have the Pick a Free Bundle. So with Stampin' Up, if you needed to buy a long list of products and you wanted to save some money, one of the things you can do is you can sign up to be a demonstrator. You don't have to do parties. You can if you want, but you don't have to. You would get a minimum of 20% off. Um, your starter kit is $125 worth of product of your choosing. You pay $99. It ships for free. And then during the month of June, you can pick any bundle in the catalog and get that for free in addition to what you're already getting. So fantastic deal. But like I said, if you wanted to just stick with um, ordering, I welcome that as well. And for using my hostess code, you do get the Celebrate Sunflower PDF for the month of June. So thank you for joining me. I hope you found today's tutorial useful and that you give this card a try and you join me right back here next Monday at 2.30 Mountain Time for another online class. Thanks for joining me. Bye.